I'm just going to walk through the tool, uh, some of the reasons we uh, decided something like this was important. Um, I, and I want to actually start, this is just a, a look at the front page, but I want to start with what uh, it takes to pull jail data in Texas, because I think that this, uh, when, when you do that, the purpose of the tool like this uh, becomes pretty clear. So right now, if you want population data for jails in Texas, or if you want COVID-19 data on infections in Texas, you have to go to this Texas Commission on Jail Standards website, go to populations, click on population reports, go down to county jail population, and then you get the most recent report, and it's a static tool. Uh, it's not very usable. It only has one month, uh, and we don't know when this tool is updated very often unless you go to the website and you actually try to check it out. Um, we, we, you won't know that this, this has been updated. Sometimes it takes 10 days. Sometimes it takes 20 days after the first of the month to update. Um, and so, uh, and the same thing is true for COVID-19 data. Right now, uh, they have a similar reporting mechanism for COVID-19, um, where you have static county by county reports. This is the statewide total, uh, and you have to go through each county. And it, this one has 53, um, 53 pages. So uh, we wanted to come up with, uh, there are a variety of reasons this is a problem. And one of them is, uh, you know, in Texas, we have uh, high rates of pretrial detention. And in order to really understand the scale of that problem, which is something the ACLU of Texas is doing quite a bit of work on, uh, it, you have to understand, you have to dig into this data to really take a hard look. And so uh, we created this tool in order to make uh, data about jails, uh, jail populations, pretrial detention, and COVID-19 uh, actionable, uh, easy for journalists to use. Um, and so um, this is the front page of it, of the Texas Jails Data Dashboard. As Melissa, we did this in collaboration with January Advisors. And on the front page, you'll see just some basic statistics, some information about, uh, a little bit of information about the tool, how local jail populations contribute to mass incarceration. Uh, jail Dashboard also has how jail populations have changed over time. Uh, and it has a link for advocates to take action when they look at this. Um, the audience for this is, is definitely journalists. It's also policymakers. We want people at the state capitol to understand the high cost of pretrial detention, uh, not just in terms of dollars, but also in terms of lives, the number of people who are incarcerated and staff who are detained uh, or, or who are uh, currently infected with COVID-19 according to the, the COVID-19 tool. Um, right now, um, you'll see that, uh, that there's a the rate of pretrial detention in Texas, uh, based on the most recent available data, is 57%. Uh, and we'll go into that data a little bit more. So I just wanted to walk you through a couple of the other tabs. Um, first, you can see a county by county comparison. We can add, uh, let's just say, Travis here, and the tool updates. And right now it has the total number of people incarcerated, and you can see how different counties vary. Um, and uh, there are other metrics that you can look at. You can look at the number incarcerated per 100,000 residents. And what's great about this particular mechanism is this also has this, uh, this line that shows you the statewide average. And there's a slight typo. We're still working out the kink, but it should be, uh, it shouldn't have that percent sign on statewide average. But um, what we have here is you can see that um, as COVID-19 began in March, so this begins in January and it goes through um, August, uh, we saw a big decrease in the incarceration rate, the local incarceration rate across the state of Texas. This tool allows us to see how that has changed over time that hasn't really been possible in real time uh, in the past. You can also hover over individual counties if you want to. This is a heat map that shows you uh, the, the statistics uh, for the metric that you selected. We've also got um, the percent of jail capacity that's full, um, the percent incarcerated pretrial, the number incarcerated pretrial, uh, and, and those are some of the key, key statistics. Uh, we tried to make this useful by making the data downloadable. Um, and you'll see on the bottom, we also have just the statewide totals. Um, and so number of people in jail, people waiting trial and the percent of 
the jail population awaiting trial. Uh, and you should be able to go to this website and because it auto populates using this uh, jail population report, this should be the most recent data in the state of Texas at any given time. Um, we've also tried to really focus in on pretrial incarceration in this tool. And so um, this has pretrial incarceration rates in key counties and also the jail population. So in Harris, we've selected the top uh, most populous counties in Texas. We have Harris and Dallas and Tarrant and Bayer. Um, and you can see that there's a wide variation in the pretrial population or in the pretrial incarceration uh, population in the jails. And uh, it, you'll see it goes from here in Harris down to here in Johnson. There's a significant difference. And what this means is there's there are wide variations in local practices that lead to uh, these different results. Um, yeah, and then you can also um, select the county and see their pretrial incarceration rates. Um, we also have data for all counties at the bottom so that um, so that you can see those. Um, the next thing I wanted to share is uh, this is this this part of the tool is intended to uh, describe the cost of pretrial incarceration in Texas. Uh, this is a really important area for policymakers as they uh, struggle through budgets that have been uh, impacted by lower tax rolls um, during the pandemic. And we hope that uh, decision makers will wrestle with these numbers and really consider uh, when and whether pretrial incarceration uh, is, uh, is warranted. And so you'll see here um, the, the top line numbers of, of the number of people who are in jail, number of people who are awaiting trial. But with this tool, we can actually adjust, uh, and, and, and this, is a, this is just an estimate, just to be clear, um, but it's an estimate based on uh, data from the Texas Association of Counties. We used a $60 per day figure to do a rough estimate of the cost of pretrial incarceration. And you can see how if you, uh, reduced pretrial, if you reduced pretrial incarceration by about a quarter, uh, Texas taxpayers would save around uh, $200 million. Um, you can also do this at the county level. So this is statewide data, um, but you can go through here and let's choose Blanco County. And you can see that uh, we have a slight grammatical error, but uh, there is a, this is the basic information um, that we hope you will find helpful. Uh, the last tab is the COVID-19 tab. Uh, this one, uh, we are building a, a data scraper out, but uh, it's pulling data from a, 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 the Texas Appleseed. Um, they've been a great partner in this, and we're grateful to them. Uh, it shows COVID-19 cases and how they've changed over time. You can select individual counties, like Travis, and it will get added to the list. These are numbers that are reported to the Commission on Jail Standards, and I want to be uh, we wanted to be super upfront that this may represent partial or incomplete data because not all counties, we've seen some discrepancies between what counties are reporting to the state of Texas uh, and what the Tex state of Texas, uh, state of Texas is, uh, has. Uh, some, some counties are not reporting data at all. And so we wanted to make sure that we underscored that, but this is the most recent available comprehensive data set on uh, COVID-19 cases. Um, this also has information on uh, the statewide totals for COVID-19 cases. Uh, the last tab is just a, an about tab uh, and it shares basic information about data sources, metrics, uh, and the background purpose of the tool. Um, 